Whether and how the news is spent in political interests, it is hard to look at TV, at modern media, without feeling that life is suffering. And that is the first noble truth of the Buddha, and something that I have found uh, the Four Noble Truths to be connected with A Course in Miracles, and we will examine that uh, next on Chinka Jabo. So, like Mahayana scriptures, the Course is divided into a lot of lists and uh, a lot of prayers and um, true sentences that are meant to be chewed on for a long time. And I found a list of four, and of course I immediately thought of the Four Noble Truths that are scattered throughout a Buddhist Bible and throughout all Buddhist scriptures. This is maybe my fourth time through the text of A Course in Miracles, and this time I switched translations. I switched to the Hugh Lin Casey translation of the Course, which was discovered in uh, Virginia Beach in the ARE, a center that me and one of my brothers knows quite well. We used to go there uh, to the library to do a lot of reading and study, and that's actually where I studied the Course for a while. But anyway, that's the translation that I'm using, and it's a translation that only includes the text and not the lessons themselves, which is fine because I've decided to take a break from using the lessons until maybe the season has changed. Maybe in fall I will start doing it again to give it a new perspective, depending on where I am, what I'm doing, etc. So today we're going to be talking about the Four Noble Truths of the Buddha, basic Buddhism, and we're going to compare those Four Noble Truths with the four steps for the correction for lack of love, found in the second chapter, again my translation, the Hugh and Casey edition of A Course in Miracles. And let's start with the um, Four Noble Truths. Uh, in this edition, again, the, the Goddard Buddhist Bible, the Four Truths are, one, the universality of suffering, two, the cause of suffering rooted in desire, three, by ending desire, suffering comes to an end, and four, the way to end desire and hence to end suffering is to follow the Eightfold Noble Path. And I'm going to compare it against this, and we'll talk about each step, but I'll, I'll read the entire um, paragraph in the opening. This is T2E1 of the Hewlin Casey edition of A Course in Miracles. The first corrective step is know first that this is an expression of fear. Then say to yourself that you must somehow have willed not to love, or the fear which arises from behavior, will, conflict have not arisen. Then the whole process is nothing more than a series of pragmatic steps in the larger process of accepting the atonement as the remedy. These steps can be summarized as follows. Know first that this is fear. Two, fear arises from lack of love. Three, the only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. Four, perfect love is the atonement. And we'll get into further definitions as we go on, but I wanted to go step by step and take a look at how um, the Four Noble Truths match with the correction for lack of love. To begin with, let's look at the mission of Buddha and the mission of the Course in general. And the mission is to bring peace and to um, answer the problem of suffering that seems inherent in creation. And Buddhism and the Course uh, come to very similar conclusions. Um, meaning that they blame the same thing, really, for, um, for suffering in this world. Suffering being lack of love, or suffering being fear. Fear and desire being the same thing. One of the hard truths of both Mahayana tradition and A Course in Miracles is that we attract the things that hurt us, and that we want things that hurt us, and that's something that's very hard to realize and it's something that takes a while to free yourself from. So if we go step by step, the universality of suffering, and I've heard it translated as <clears throat> life is suffering, and uh, that's something that every religion addresses ultimately. That's what we look for when we search for God. Um, some meaning to when we look around and we hear of horrible things happening in the news, and we see our own shortcomings, our own debts, our own problems, the things that we lack, the things that we want, 
it becomes quite obvious that life as we know it, life as is seen by the eyes, the life that we perceive, is essentially lacking. And so a higher consciousness needs to be found. Which brings us both to our second noble truth and the second step. And the second truth is the cause of suffering rooted in desire. Okay, And this is, uh, in part, in step two for the correction for lack of love, fear arises from lack of love. Okay, So if we look at fear, and we look at suffering, and we look at desire, we see that um, we have lack of love, again, synonymous with suffering, again, with um, want, lack of, of not having, of being lost in this world, of not being connected to God, of not being in touch with um, uh, serenity and peace. Uh, we have to understand that that comes from desire, uh, in Buddhist terms, or fear, which can be expressed as another kind of desire. It's fear, it's giving validation to the things that don't deserve validation in our lives. It's giving power to people who irritate us by addressing them. It's feeding the trolls. It's giving into our fears just as we give into our desires. Just like um, we choose to have fearful, insecure, stupid thoughts throughout our heads uh, throughout the day and the 50,000 thoughts that we get in each day. How many of them are just uh, all about desire or about lack or about wishing things were different from how they were or repeating conversations in our heads that we've had with others and try to get on higher footing. But what's the answer out of this? Knowing that life is suffering and that suffering comes from fear and fear and desire are really synonymous in the great scheme of things. Um, the third noble truth is simply to end desire, we end suffering. And as expressed in the correction for lack of love, the only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. Now, perfect love is defined elsewhere and throughout the text as um, the love that is eternal, the love that has no beginning or ending. Like a beautiful moment in your life that um, frees you from this idea of time. It's love that's perfectly forgiving, both for yourself and for others. It's uh, love that is a lack of desire. Love where you feel you have everything you need. In the hymn I sang earlier, um, No change my heart shall fear, nothing can I lack. It's that sort of love. It's a love you can feel through and with people, but it's a love that's often, in the mortal, pers in the mortal picture of things, fleeting and hard to hang on to. And it's one that can only be found through... Um, through perfect love, through peace. It's something that can only be found through forgiveness and hard work. And that brings us to our fourth noble truth and our fourth step. Um, the way to end desire and hence to end suffering is to follow the eightfold noble path. And the correction for lack of love, the only remedy for or, um, perfect love is the atonement. The atonement, which is... Uh, difficult concept in the Course, something that I've heard criticized by Christian pastors online. But in the Course it means, as uh, defined earlier, it's an interlocking chain of forgiveness, meaning you see the best in another, they, they see the best in you. It's sort of a pass it forward sort of thing. It's where each person helps the next person, the next person helps others, and on and on and on. Um, in uh, the Mahayana scripture it gets a bit more specific in that it's the Eightfold Noble Path, right? Right mindfulness, right thinking, right speech, and so on, right? And that's why we see um, uh, pagodas in the shape of eight. Eight is seen as a lucky number because it's the eight different perspectives which we could go on <laughs> talking about in another video. Um, but I just wanted to draw just a parallel between the correction for lack of love and the Four Noble Truths because uh, here within the course you have find a little bit 
of embedded Buddhism, I think. It's sort of taking those four ideas and uh, arranging them in such a way that it applies to every single situation, which reinforces like a Mahayana interpretation of the Four Noble Truths, where you have to start thinking this way and living this way and putting your life um, on this course, um, on this path, on this Tao, um, through realizing that it's not about who you're following, what you're reading, it's about making yourself a better person, defaulting on virtue, um, forgiving everyone, and through forgiving everyone, realizing that there is no lack of love, there is no fear, and that fear can be taken out in a moment by finding um, perfect love, and perfect love is available within your reach at all times. Just a few spiritual thoughts for today. Thanks for watching. Jika Peace.